Good morning. We're live from the State Health Operations Center in Smyrna, Delaware. This morning, we're joined by Lieutenant Governor Bethany Hall Long, Dr. Kara Odom Walker, the Secretary of the Delaware Department of Health and Social Services, and Dr. Carol Rattay, the Director of the Division of Public Health. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. The Division of Public Health is announcing three additional presumptive positive cases this morning. All three of these individuals are under the age of 30 and associated with the University of Delaware community. Very important, no, none of these individuals are severely ill and they are currently self-isolated at home. All these individuals were exposed to the same confirm, confirmed case of COVID-19 as the case that we announced yesterday. So let me um, reiterate, all four individuals are doing fine. All four individuals are at home and self-isolating. One thing that is probably helpful for people to know is that when we learn about a positive case, we do investigation to better understand if um, or how many people may have come in contact with a person while they may have been symptomatic. So that's something that our epidemiologists or our d disease investigators do. And so if anybody is considered a contact of these four cases, they will be notified by us. And we ask that they stay at home for 14 days. So anybody who has any questions or concerns about that, they can feel free to call our call center, which I'll announce right now is 1-866-408-1898. Um, but if you don't receive a call from public health in the next few days, then you should not be considered a close contact. So we've received a number of questions about self-monitoring. That's a term that people have heard a lot. Can you kind of talk about what the process is for self-monitoring uh, if people do get notified by public health? Yeah. So we actually have kind of two different levels of self-monitoring, and that um, uh, depends upon risk. Um, in fact, we use the terms a level three risk, which is a higher risk, and a level two risk, which is um, less concerning. It's a lower level of risk. Individuals who have traveled to one of the five countries that are, actually, let me repeat that. Repeat that. Individuals who have traveled to one of the four countries that are considered level three, and that would include China, North Korea, South Korea, mm -hmm. um, Iran, and Italy, um, would um, be in that level three state, but also somebody who has been exposed to a positive case would be considered level three. And, and individuals at that level need to stay at home for 14 days. Um, they contact us, we make sure they have what they need, meaning like a, a kit to um, check their temperature, a log to write down their temperature and how they're feeling. And we touch base with them throughout those 14 days, several times just to make sure that um, uh, they know what they're supposed to be doing and that they're adhering to it. Other individuals may be asked to self-monitor and we put them in the level two category. And for those individuals, we also make sure they have the testing kit and that they know how to, um, or the monitoring kit, sorry, and they know you know, how to take their temperature, et cetera. We ask them not to go to school or work and to avoid large crowds, um, but they're not quarantined. They're, they're not um, required to stay in their home during that time. But for anybody who's being self-monitored, uh, what's the most important is if they begin to develop symptoms, they need to contact us immediately so that we can um, get the ball rolling for a, a better, for a full assessment. Alberta Crowley, asked uh, a question and we've received this question from numerous people. They'd like to know more about the testing procedures and why we're not testing more people. Um, so kind of how the tests work, uh, what the criteria are that we're abiding by, uh, et cetera. Sure, I'll start with that. And if you wanna add anything, sure. Dr. Walker, um, please do. Um, so 
you know, I'll emphasize this is an evolving situation. And when we began and um, Delaware did not have the ability to test for many weeks, we really were only testing those who were at the highest risk. So those who um, had been to one of the, um, the level th three countries and had symptoms. Um, that's all evolved. And now um, that testing is much more available um, through our laboratory, but also very importantly through in our state lab core is able to do, um, to do testing. Um, we've been able to open up the criteria and this is going to help us, you know, not only better identify people who might be more mildly ill, um, but then, you know, also it helps us better understand what's going on in our community. So if individuals have the symptoms of cough, fever, and shortness of breath, um, even if they haven't traveled to one of the um, higher risk countries or been exposed to an individual um, with COVID-19, they should talk to their doctor about whether they should get an assessment. But um, the testing is now available, um, primary care and other places. And it's really very similar to how flu testing is, um, is normally done. Sheila Buckman Elliott asks, does presumptive tests mean that they are positive by Delaware, but not confirmed with the CDC? That's exactly what it means. <laughs> That's a great question. Um, is there any guidance that's being pushed out about large gatherings in Delaware? So at this point in time, we have not issued uh, wide scale guidance, but we are recommending that individuals who are planning large events use their best judgment. And certainly we're recommending that you let people know who may be in higher risk categories, uh, particularly the elderly or people with underlying medical conditions that you avoid large gatherings. Um, and certainly think about things that are non-essential right now. We, we really do wanna prevent community spread and particularly protect others who may be at risk for contracting any kind of illness, particularly coronavirus, but also um, flu and other cold symptoms right now because they are very similar. So we're, we're right now monitoring the situation. This may evolve, and so please stay informed and up to date. Uh, again, Dr. Rattay shared our phone number where you can call for specific information, but also check our website at de.gov backslash coronavirus for more information as things may change. Yeah, and that's really great advice. And we also, um, you know, we really advise people that if they are going to have an event, um, that they make sure precautions are in place so that there is warm water and soap and hand sanitizer and space for people to be able to um, spread apart around six feet. Um, also that the area is well ventilated and um, that they um, are advising people who are ill not to come as well as they know how to manage um, illness if it takes place. Uh, we know that we're receiving a number of questions as well from concerned parents about schools. Uh, can you speak about some of the efforts that are being done to coordinate with schools and any considerations about closings? I want to particularly uh, call out the Division of Public Health for their work to partner with the schools and meet with superintendents and meet with school nurses because they are at the front lines of trying to figure out what's going on and, and give guidance to the schools. And at this point, schools are uh, coordinating with us. We are certainly giving uh, precautions about uh, ensuring individuals know about hand washing routines, try to stay home if you're sick, and, and really just make sure that you're taking care of yourself at this time. And that means good hand hygiene. Uh, try to avoid touching your face, shaking mm -hmm. hands, you know, doing the elbow bump if you can. Um, but particularly for young people, we're really uh, cautiously monitoring what's going on and, and may at some point have to recommend that cleanings happen or closures happen. And so again, the idea that you're staying in close contact with us and we're continuing to give evolving uh, guidance is, is going to be very important. Is there any guidance um, for nursing homes or uh, assisted living facilities? Yes, um, there is guidance. Um, you know, there's been a lot of emphasis um, in the last few weeks, especially to make sure that all infection control procedures are up to date and being executed to their fullest in long-term care facilities. We've had conversations with long-term care, and this is an area where um, 
Um, we're going to continue to have you know, a, a lot of conversations with long-term care centers. I know Dr. Walker has thought a lot about um, you know, guidance that we should give around visitors. Uh, we have concerns um, about visitors coming into long-term care facilities and we're going to be coming out with some guidance to um, uh, really try to um, limit or eliminate visitors coming into long-term care facilities during this time. Yeah, so please stay tuned for that mm -hmm. official guidance, but we do recommend that individual facilities make decisions as indicated. Given the evolving situation, we really are most worried about if there were a case in an assisted living facility or a nursing home because those are our most mm -hmm. fragile Delawareans and we want to keep them healthy. So uh, visitors certainly should not uh, go and, and visit if they are ill, uh, including staff, but we will put out more formal guidance because at this point we are very concerned about that population. The same is true for, for others who may be living in close quarters or facilities. It's very similar types of guidance. And people have said, well, what should I do about um, visiting someone who's elderly and, and maybe at home? Mm -hmm. I think there are the same kind of precautions we'd want to put in place that you just use, use good judgment right now, continue to stay uh, informed and up to date, wash your hands, uh, certainly after making close contact with individuals and keep people healthy. Let's talk about hygiene a little bit. Mm -hmm. What are some ways that individuals can help keep themselves healthy as well as to help uh, disinfect any surfaces that they, you know, they frequently use? Um, you know, I know that today a lot of you were streaming and thinking we were going to do the demonstrations. Uh, what we want to really recommend is, as our uh, secretary and Dr. Rutte have indicated, that hygiene washing your hands, soap and warm water. And I know it sounds silly, but you want to do at least 20 seconds. Sing happy birthday to yourself twice. Um, and make sure you get the entire hand surface and make sure you get under the nails. That is really the number one thing that we can do is good hand washing. When you're done drying your hands, use that paper towel to open that bathroom door. You know, businesses are actually moving some of their trash cans near the door as people are leaving the bathroom or the cafeteria having that available, having at least 60% alcohol based uh, with sanitizer. Uh, you know, there's not one method of, of cleanser. Uh, it doesn't have to be a certain brand, but you want to have that at least 60 or higher of alcohol. Mm -hmm. Cleaning that surface, really important. And again, as indicated, uh, sneezing into your sleeve, doing the Corona bump <laughs> to say hi. These are really the important things. And Again, we are hearing from our emergency departments, you know, if you're just worried and have a little sniffle, don't rush to the emergency room. Really that higher fever and that really uh, cough along, um, you know, with respiratory distress, having a hard time breathing. We really mm -hmm. want uh, the folks who need to be in the emergency room be there and others use those wonderful precautions and use that call line. I think you've heard it before, the one 866 408-1899, that's really an important line. And thank you to Public Health for setting that up. Um, I know the governor and all are very pleased with the effort and have been planning a long time. And thank you for that hard work and helping us get prepared. Thank, thank you. you. Any final messages that you'd like to give to the public right now? You know, I just think it's a, it's a time for folks to, you know, for us all to do what we can to as the Lieutenant Governor and Dr. Walker both said, you know, protect ourselves by, with good hygiene, make sure we don't go out into public if we are ill, um, try to avoid crowds, especially individuals who are at higher risk. But it's also, it's not a, it's not a time to panic, it's just, you know, a time to um, make good, good measured approaches. Absolutely. And, and again, just feel free to call us if you do have questions. If you are sick, we really recommend you call your provider um, rather than rush to a, a visit uh, or an emergency room right now. It, we really do want to put out additional guidance around your, all of your questions. So if you have them, feel free to send them to us and we'll continue to do webinars like this, mm -hmm. live streams, so that we can answer your questions as things change. Great. Thank you very much, Lieutenant Governor Bethany Hall Long. Dr. Kara Walker and Dr. Carol Rite from the State Health Operations Center in Smyrna. Thank you. And again, the number 186-408-1899. And for the hearing impaired, it's 800-232-5460.